The seventh ranked Chandler Gilbert men's basketball team defeated number 14 Pima two out of three times in the regular season to capture the top playoff seed. Now they meet for the fourth time in the Region 1 Finals. It's the Aztecs and the Coyotes in the Region 1 Championships live here at the Coyote Center on the Chandler Gilbert Sports Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Paquino alongside Matt McCurdy and Chandler Gilbert women's basketball coach Fletcher Brown. And we got a matchup of two great teams. Records identical, 27 and four, both school best. 18 and four in league play, both school best. And Fletch, right off the bat, both teams are on their way to the court. We've got the Aztecs still in the locker room. What are both teams feeling right now? Well, I'd like to think that both teams are feeling confident. Uh, although they did play three times and Chandler Gilbert won two out of three, uh, the Pima Aztecs are a really confident bunch. Like you mentioned, same record, same record in conference play. So I would like to think both coaching staffs are confident going into tonight and, and both teams are, are fired up about making that potential trip to the national tournament. The Aztecs so good, putting up a national best 104 points on the season. They close out the regular season, seeing their 12-game winning streak snap at Eastern Arizona. But in the first round of the playoffs against the third seed, the Glendale Gauchos, they stood loud and proud, putting up 104 points, 55 rebounds, getting 26 points from Jalen Alexander to move on to here. And for Chandler Gilbert, the top seed, they had to win the last game in the regular season at Yavapai to lock up the top seed. Mission accomplished. And Matt, in the first round, right here on home court, they fought off a very gritty number four Scottsdale team. Absolutely. I mean, Scottsdale, every time we see them, they play tough, they're aggressive. And even on the record where they don't necessarily look like a compatible team, not at the same level, they play hard. And it was a tight, hard-fought game. Exciting to watch all the way across the board. Absolutely. Marlon Landingham, outstanding. 22 points, hit five threes. Justin Fisher with 19 points. So now it's a tale of two ends. Chandler Gilbert leading the conference in defense, allowing only 65 points. And here come the Aztecs. They like to run and gun, putting up a national best 104 points on the year. Coach, your thoughts of what Coach Steve Silsby and his team has to do to slow the Aztecs down tonight? Yeah, it's going to be a contrast of styles. Pima wants to get up and down, score a lot of points, shoot a lot of threes, a lot of motion once they get into the half court. Uh, Coach Silsby's team, their calling card this year has been their defense. They're really tough. They rotate really well. They have length and athleticism defensively that makes them uh, versatile. You know, they got five guys on the floor at all times that can guard multiple positions. So, uh, you know, they say styles make fights. We got two different styles. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one today. And uh, if Coach Silsby and the Coyotes can, can communicate and, and can get back in transition, not allow a ton of open threes early in the shot clock, um, then, then they can swing the game in their favor. Pima so good on the road, a record of eight and three outside their arena. And Matt, we know how good the Coyotes are on home court. They're almost unstoppable. Uh, yeah, I mean, they've lost, what, one game on home court. They have tremendous energy here. Last game with Scottsdale fan base showed up. It was exciting. It was in and energized the whole way through. And look, we talked about this last time. We saw Scottsdale, who played a really uptight defense, had some great steals early. Cows need to lock that down, need to make sure they don't throw bad passes away. And we'll see what Pima's strategy is. I thought personally Scottsdale playing that intensity hurt them later on with the foul trouble, but we'll see what Pima does. Pima won the Region 1 title from 2017 through 2019. It's the first time they've been back in the final since. And for Chandler Gilbert, they were in the Region 1 finals last year, losing to Scottsdale, still looking for that elusive Region 1 championships. A lot more to come from the Coyote Center. The starting lineups, interviews, and the opening tip. Keep it locked and loaded. The Region 1 championships right here on the Chandler Gilbert Sports Network.
And we welcome you back to the Coyote Center. The Coyote is about to tip off the Region 1 Finals against the Pima Aztecs. We are joined by Coyotes coach Steve Silsby and coach are closing in. Give us kind of the thought process as your team tries to close this out and move on to the national tournament. Yeah, I mean, Pima's, you know, been the, like I told, told you earlier, Pima's been the flagship, you know, division program in my mind over the last eight, ten years here in uh, the ACCAC. Coach Peabody does a great job with them. Uh, you know, they're very skilled, very, you know, they can score the basketball. Uh, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, I'm, I'm glad we're playing at home. Um, and, and we got to control the pace of play a little bit. And, and uh, we got to keep them off the glass. You know, they're a great rebounding team. And if we can, uh, you know, try to just take the air out of the ball a little bit and, and try to keep the score down a little bit and, and, and own the glass, we'll be all right. But if they kill us on the glass tonight, it's going to be a long night. Absolutely. And, and you know, Coach, we, we speculate a lot about sometimes the energy in the locker room, where the boys are at, but you're there, you're live in the action. What is the energy like being where you guys are at in this this championship game, and how are you guys feeling? You know, I think they're excited, but, uh, you know, I told them you can't get overexcited. You, you got to be focused. It's okay to have the butterflies a little bit. That's natural. It's normal. Um, you know, get them out in those first two, three, four minutes of the game, but you can't be so over hyped up and amped up that like you just go brain dead or, or you're not focused in. So, you know, I, I guess like a, a subtle excitement yeah. um, it, it, and come out with good energy and, and, you know, don't let your your blood pressure and all that kind of stuff get you so amped up in those first two, three minutes that, you know, you shoot a jump shot 22 feet over the rim or something like that. <laughs> absolutely. So oh, absolutely. Thank you. Well, Coach, best of luck to you tonight, Thanks, okay? Joe. Appreciate you guys. You I'll see you later. Coyotes have beaten the Aztecs two of three times in the regular season. Now the fourth time. It is a automatic ticket to the national tournament in Danville, Illinois. Keep it locked and loaded for the pregame show. We're going to be talking to Aztecs assistant coach Mike Morgan coming up in just a matter of minutes. And we welcome you back to the Coyote Center. Huge matchup in the Region 1 Finals. The Aztecs, the two seed, taking on the one seed. The Chandler Gilbert Coyotes were joined by Aztecs assistant coach Mike Morgan. And coach, tremendous season for the Aztecs. Ranked 14th nationally, 104 points a tip, which leads the nation. Field goal percentage leads the nation. Assists per game leads the nation. Reboundings per game ranked third in the nation. From top to bottom, the skill sets off the charts. And now the ultimate prize with a chance to play for the Region 1 Finals. Well, this is where we're at today, right? So this is what it's all about. Uh, all the things that you mentioned has been our, our philosophy at uh, Pima. It's been race to 100, been our motto, and uh, sharing the basketball. So that's our goal today. And we, you know, obviously, Chandler's style is a little bit different. And so it's going to be the battle of the two different styles today. Yes, and we've been talking to some of your staff, you know, they said, you guys feel confident that this team is just as good as the 2017, 2018, 2019 that win, went to nationals. So how are you guys feeling about this team looking forward? Well, I mean, I think it's all, you know, hearsay until we do it, right? So <laughs> so that team that was, uh, you know, the made the national championship game, boy, we just had a lot of similar parts that we have today. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, this is obviously you got to take care of business here, and, and, and uh, that's what we're expecting to do. Love and, it. And, Coach, for your team, you haven't been back to the Region 1 Finals since 2019. Coach Steve Silsby just gave us some words a short time ago saying that Pima's been the flagship of this region. And that being said, how hungry is this team to get not just back here, but to get it done and punch the ticket? Well, I tell you, you know, after uh, last year's loss to uh, Scottsdale, it was really important to all of us, from 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 the coach Coach Peabody all the way down to our manager, and so it's something that we've been working for really hard, and it's something that's really important to us, and it's something that we really expect to do, 
but you know it's a very competitive conference and uh, coach Silby does a great job and so it's I mean this is no easy task today and I want to get your thoughts on some key matchups in tonight's contest because you look at both teams start studded lineups great players coming off the bench give us a couple keys for the Aztecs in this one coach well you know Harris does such a great job for for uh, Chandler so you got to control Harris you got to make sure that you've got him in check and I mean really the whole offense works through through Harris for for a Chandler but you know on, really on both sides of the ball I mean I think it's going to be a you know a 12 12 round matchup really I mean I expect nothing but both teams to come down to the wire at the end of the day it's it's two really good teams and coach the way I look at it because of the skill sets of both teams the records the, the schedules I mean needless to say regardless of who wins this game the other team that has to walk off and be at the mercy of the selection committee. Safe to say, that resume for that team is more than earning in your estimation of the national tournament? You would think so, but you know, I think both teams would probably tell you the same thing as you don't want to depend on the suits to uh, make that decision for you. And so you want to punch your own ticket and, and just be confident that, that you get to that spot. And then you're kind of waiting if you're in the other slot, right? So we don't want to be in that position. There you go, the Aztecs coming on the road, eight and three away from their gym. Hey, look, their game travels, they're fast, they're furious, they crash the glass. Oh, and by the way, they put up not one, not two, over 100 points a night, which leads the nation. <laughs> that is assistant coach Mike Morgan. Keep it locked and loaded right here from the Coyote Center. A lot more and the opening tip, minutes away. Appreciate it. And we welcome you back to the Coyote Center. We are just minutes away between the top seed Chandler Gilbert taking on number two Pima. Chandler won two of three matchups in the regular season. And this game features 
all ACC, AC first teamers. Four of the five are on the court. Chandler Gilbert's Andre Harris, the Region 1 Player of the Year, averaging 18 and 8. Field goal percentage, 53%. Pima's Dylan Baker, fifth in scoring in the league at 18 points, shooting 50%. Jalen Alexander drops 16 a game, shooting 63%, third best in the league. Then there's the league freshman of the year, and Cohen J. Gonzalez played his high school ball at Mesquite just down the road. He drops 15 a game, shooting 50%, 47% from three, ranked second in the league. Now we look at Matt's, the regular season matchups. December 13th at the Coyote Center. Coyotes won 79-69. Justin Fisher, 19. Andre Harris with 18. Coyotes shot 51%. Dylan Baker led Pima with 23. Jason Alexander with 15. Gonzalez with 12. Pima shot 45%. Then on January 10th, Coyotes won at Pima 80-71. Andre Harris with 17-9. Jakob Lloyd with 16, KJ Dunn 13 and seven. Lockie McCain with 11, three threes. Will Coates with eight and 11 rebounds. Coyotes held Pima to only 39% shooting. Baker with 22, Gonzalez with 14, Coda Benson with 12, and Jalen Alexander was held to only four points. So those are the first two matchups. Then on January 24th, Coyotes without Justin Fisher, serving a two game suspension, and Will Coates was out. He was sick. Coyotes lost at Pima, 83-64. That was actually a tight game. It was 35-32 at the half, but were outscored 48-32 in the second frame. Andre Harris with 28-8. Jakob Lloyd with 13. KJ Dunn with 12 and 7. Coyotes shot only 35%, 17% from three. Pima getting big games from Dylan Baker, 21 and 10. Gonzalez with 18. Gabe Oldham, the center, with 20 and 9. Oldham leads the league in his fifth nationally in field goal percentage at 66%. So, Matt, as we kind of look at those numbers between the both teams, Coyotes won two of three when they were locked and loaded with all their players. And those two victories, they held Pima to season lows, an average of 70 points and only six and a half assists a game. Wow. So this is a Chandler Gilbert team. They allow a conference low 65 points. They know how to put the brakes on the Aztecs. And talking to Coach Brian Peabody, the Aztecs coach, just a short time ago, he said, the big thing for us, we want to get up and down the court. We want to force the tempo on this Chandler Gilbert team. So Steve Silsby talked about this Pima team and how good they are. And I, and, and I asked him point blank is, containing Gonzalez on the wing and not letting him loose. He's like, look, we have got to defend everyone mm -hmm. because they've got a lot of weapons. Dylan Baker, he's committed to NAU. Yeah. They've got Jalen Alexander, 16 point score. He's been offered by Adam State. As Mike Morgan told us in the pregame, the assistant coach for the Aztecs, they have seven players that have been offered D1 scholarships. Wow. So this is a team 8-3 away from their gym. And now here they are looking to get back to the national tournament for the first time since 2019. They won the Region 1 from 2017, 2018, and 2019. And for Chandler Gilbert, they're still chasing that elusive first Region 1 championship. Yeah. I mean, Joe, and you've, you've laid out the resume great. These are two teams that don't have a lot of chinks in the armor you know they're two powerful impressive teams I tell you what the Coyotes got impressive defense we heard that from the Aztec coaches lineup they know that the Coyotes have a defense to reckon with so if the boys can get back stay in front of them guard the perimeter Aztecs if there's one thing I'd say they like to play inside they like to get it down to the hoop they like to take those inside shots the outside may be their weakest point and that's saying a lot they don't have a lot of weaknesses so this is going to be a game of strategy, high IQ, and, uh, and and both teams going to go really hard, I'm sure. Referees, right in the bottom of your screen, Saeed Alameen, Michael Ojeda, and Austin Spiker. And we're going to take a moment for the national anthem, and then we'll have the starting lineups, and then the opening tip.
Starting lineups for Chandler Gilbert. And those are gonna be announced in just a matter of seconds. Justin Fisher, putting up 10-5 and three. Lockie McCain, sharpshooter from three. Putting him eight, three and one. Will Coates, dynamic, could do it all. Nine, five and one. Andre Harris, 18, seven and two. And Jakob Lloyd, eight, four and one. Right now you're looking at Pima being introduced. Cohen J. Gonzalez, the pride of Mesquite High, freshman of the year in the conference. We have 15, two and three. Jalen Alexander, 16, six and two. Dylan Baker, 18, four and two. Coda Benson, number 22, seven, two and three. And Gabe Oldham, 14, eight and one. The big fellow rolling his way. And now on the other side for Chandler Gilbert. The energy, the love, the excitement on home court. And here is Chandler Gilbert. They've got their home base. They've got the fan base out in force. They've got the fans, not just here, but families like Will Coates, his family in Texas watching. We got Jakob Lloyd, Ben Lloyd, father of Jakob watching from down under. And there are families from across the nation that are tuned in to see their loved ones battle on the court tonight for a chance to go to the national tournament. And once again, Matt, can't stress this enough. Chandler Gilbert has never won a region one title. And this is the sixth time under the guidance of athletic director, Russ Luce and coach Silsby. I asked him what it would mean if, if they pulled it off. He didn't want to go that far. He wanted to embrace the moment take care of business at hand, and then when it's all said and done, can think about legacies and, and moments and memories. But in the meantime, it's all about this opening tip, these two great teams, identical conference records, 18 and four. The tiebreaker went to Chandler Gilbert, winning two of three of the regular season. Only time they lost, they did not have Justin Fisher, they did not have Will Coates, two starters. And we are ready to tip this one off. Paulo Hutchison on the live stream. Can't say enough about Paulo being here this evening. And it's the Aztecs with the opening tip. And they will move fast and furiously. Swinging the ball around the perimeter. They try to go inside. Oldham down low. Inside feed. And that is a good look underneath. And the early basket by Coda Benson. And you're going to see this a lot in tonight's game. The Aztecs are great at moving the ball. Chandler Gilbert, its first offensive possession. Tight defense by the Aztecs. Jakob on that outside. Andre picked up immediately by Dylan Baker. Benson on Fisher. Shot is blocked. Taken away, Benson up the court. Dylan gliding. And they're gonna call the offensive foul. And that one goes against Jalen Alexander. That picks up his first. And great call by Andre Harris, realizing the drive was there. He didn't have his, he didn't have the placement to get in front of him, so he just put it, planted his feet, took the charge, and got the ball back into their hands. 18 on the shot clock. Lockie McCain picked up by Gonzalez. Shot is in and out. Scooped up by Oldham. Racing on that other side. Aztecs moving quickly. And loving seeing that from Lockie McCain. Last game against Scottsdale. Didn't get nearly as many shots off as he typically does. So the fact that he's coming out early, getting those shots off and pulling up, love to see that. Dylan Baker misses from long range. Chance of defense on the Aztec side. Coming off a 104 point win against Glendale, the block underneath by Jalen Alexander. Gonzalez out to Dylan Baker. Baker in the lane, kicks it out. Gonzalez long range. Ooh. And Cohen Jay, the pride of Mesquite High from long range, knocks it down. And he was ready and set to take that shot. No hesitation from Cohen. A five point Aztecs lead coming out of the gates fast and furiously. They put up a national best 104 points a tip. Fisher kicks it out to Andre. 
Andre underneath, going strong. Good move. And knocks it in. And Brian Peabody wanted the offensive against Andre. And Andre really, you can tell, coming off those games where he didn't play, played against Scottsdale, now he's fired up and he's in his prime right here. Cohen J down the lane. Wow. Won't go. Lockie cleans it up. Fisher gets the Coyotes in the half court offense. Transitioning styles. Aztecs want to play up tempo. The Coyotes have no problem slowing it down. Justin swings it up top. Jakob, top of the key. Jakob, bang. Jakob Lloyd. He's got family all over the world. They just put a smile on their faces. He ties it at five. And don't be deceived by Jakob Lloyd. He's a big man, he can power through, but he's got a shot on him, and he will take it. Cohen J, off balance. Wow. How about the elbow from Cohen J. Gonzalez, the freshman of the year in the conference, puts up 15. He's got five quick ones just like that. And that right there is why he's one of their top players. He's quick, he's fast, he can make any shot work. Tremendous effort from Cohen Gonzalez. Fisher in and out, Andre cleans it up. Andre in traffic and in. Andre Fisher, four quick ones, we're not at seven. Back the other way, Aztecs, no hesitation, swinging it around. Dylan Baker out to Coda Benson, Will Coates. Jalen Alexander down low, Alexander loses the handle. Andre takes it away. Fisher maneuvering up that right side. Coyotes will slow it down. What great defense by Jakob Lloyd on that last play. Locking it down, keeping the ball out away from the hands of the Aztecs. Andre. Oh my goodness. How about the reverse from the big fella? Andre with six. Nine, seven Coyotes. And Brian Peabody has maneuvered his way to the half court area. Dumped down in the blocks. Alexander taken away by Jakob. And Joe, you can tell right here, the Aztecs playing defense cautiously, making sure they know Coyotes want to get inside, give it to Andre, give it to their big men, drive towards the lane. They're playing it safe, they're keeping their distance. Aztecs off the inbounds. Cohen J thought about the stop and catch, loses the handle. Mad scrum on the floor. A tied up situation. Chandler Gilbert picks it up. A 9-7 Cowdy's lead. The Region 1 Championship right here on the Chandler Gilbert Sports Network from the Coyote Center in the East Valley off the 202. Wide Marlin open. inside, Marlin high off the glass <laughs> on the great feed from Jakob. And we got a timeout on the floor. The Coyotes on a run and they're up by four. And you can feel the energy, you can feel the love from the Coyotes bench as they storm in. Uh, coming off that timeout, what great looks, they're feeling the rhythm. And hopefully on the live stream here, you can feel the chemistry from this team. And no question, you can see the high IQ by the Coyotes. Jakob saw the mismatch. Marlon down low, coming off that 22-point outing in the victory over Scottsdale, knocking down five threes. That time, just was patient underneath the fake and the up and in for the basket. And now the Coyotes with a four-point lead on home court. And this team so good throughout the season here at the Coyote Center. Yes, when you can see these Coyotes making those passes, find those inside looks, and honestly, giving us the shot that they definitely wanted and needed, but you didn't think they were initially gonna take, those, that's the Coyotes we love to see. Cohen J running the offense, picked up by Marlin. Good perimeter defense by the Coyotes. Dylan Baker dumps it inside. Alexander, and Alexander loses the ball on the baseline. Once again, great defense by the Coyotes. Coyotes doing a great job down low, boxing out, making sure no passes get over the top. Under 15 minutes left in the first half. Marlin up top, picked up by Dylan Baker. 
off the screen. Marlin going in. Marlin, little floater, won't go. A battle underneath. And Jalen Alexander and Andre, and Andre wins the battle. And Andre Harris bringing it all so far. Six points and working hard down in the paint. Loving the intensity from the Coyotes, bringing it early, driving in early, taking, the, taking it to the rim early in this first half. Justin Fisher off the inbounds. We saw them struggle against Scottsdale, talking to Coach Steve Silsby. They worked on that, try to free some players up, and he says along the way, players have got to work hard setting screens for their teammates. And how about Jakob again down low? The pride of Australia getting it done. 13-7. And you just got to love it when a big man like Jakob goes one-on-one -on -one to the hoop and converts it into a point. Oof. And how about the big feed wow. and the throw down by Wes Bell on a beautiful look. He slammed it right in the faces of the Kyle right there. Wes Ma Bell. Making his presence known is impressive. Putting him 8-5 and 1. Big dagger. Silencing the crowd for a split second. And Andre getting the crowd back on their feet. He's got 8-15-9. The Region 1 Player of the Year showing up, and the Defensive Player of the Year in Justin Fisher delivering as well. The pride of Hamilton Woo. scooping wow. and Alexander with the block. And you can see right there, Joe, why Andre Harris is Player of the Year. I mean, the composure, the skill between that last one with the reverse and then that little hook over the top, he, he, he just dazzles us every night he plays. KJ coming in, putting up 10, 6, and 1. Field goal percentage. 54% ranked in the top 10 in the conference. KJ shoots it out to Marlon. Marlon not afraid. And oh. one! Marlon Landingham, gold shoes and all. Golden from three. One, two, three. Marlon Landingham will head to the line for the extra point in the face of Conan Gonzalez. Couch bench erupting after that one. Marlon Lanningham coming off a 22-point outing in the win over Scottsdale. Five threes. And Marlon, one of the sharp shooters from three in the conference at 42%, completes the three-point play. And that's the type of confidence Marlon Lanningham brings to this team and to the game. He takes it to the hole. He doesn't, he doesn't think about it. He, puts it. he puts it into the hoop and converts into points. He's got six points. The Coyotes are up 10. And how about the defense? K.J. Dunn, Coda Benson. Losing the handle. Picked up. Great trap. Dylan Baker, 10 on the shot clock, and that is great defense by Will Coates. And right now, this Coyote defensive unit suffering and suffocating this Aztecs offensive unit. Nine on the shot clock. Shot from the outside, and that is drained. Good look by Dylan Baker, his first basket of the night. Baker leading the team, putting 18, four, and two. A 44% shooter from three. So many weapons on this Aztec squad. JF the other way. JF, wow. and JF gets the roll. Justin Fisher coming off that 19-point outing against Scottsdale, feeling confident. And who on this Kyle's team will not shoot a three. I mean, they're scoring across the board. Some nights you think one player's got all the points, but no, this team's gonna make everyone shine. Dylan Baker can't connect. The battle ensues underneath. Physicality. And West Bell banging underneath, and the Aztecs will get another possession. Checking back in, Jalen Alexander, Cohen J. Gonzalez, Zach Williamson checking out. And Joe, you can just really see the basketball IQ for both these teams. They're smart, they're clever, they run plays. It's just excellent basketball across the board. Jalen Alexander battling underneath, using the physicality. Has a scholarship auto offer from Adam State. Parker Larson in the game. Parker lets it fly. That's going to be off the mark. Rebound. And Dylan Baker taking up the floor. And we got a foul away from the ball on Parker Larson. And you know what? 
love Parker Larson's energy. The last few games, he's kind of started on the bench, made his way up and found his way onto the court this season, especially in these last few games. Really proven himself strong and powerful underneath the hoop. And I, I love, you know, even though he didn't make that shot, I love that he feels comfortable taking those shots and the team, you know, they just back each other up when they do that. Miscommunication by Oldham to Jalen Alexander. Coyotes up eight, 22-14. Under 12 minutes left in this first half. Marlin thought about it for a split second, looking for some range. Marlin driving. Wow. Aztecs wanted to travel. And a technical call, technical foul will be called on Marlon Landingham. Clear frustration from Marlon on that last play. Felt like he had received the foul when he drove in, didn't get the call. And that will be a technical on Marlon. And, and we've seen, you know what, these games can be high emotion, high intensity, and bring out the emotions of these players. you got to be careful in this game. Lock those down, keep it together. Gonzalez at the line. So lethal, 80% free throw shooter. And the Aztecs are not a team you want to give free possessions and free opportunities at the line too. So now it pulls the Aztecs within six. And I asked Coach Steve Silsby about that. I said, Coach, when, when your team, you got everyone intact, I think you're the team to beat. The big question is, can you keep it mentally together upstairs and he he agreed and said that was going to be a big talking point to his team and it was in yesterday's practice keep it under control we saw Marlon get a technical foul in the, in the win over Scottsdale at a critical point in the game the Coyotes were able to get past that the Aztecs are at a different level you can't afford to give them free points and you know what Joe we talked in, in Coach Silsby's interview earlier, he talked about don't let the energy of this game get away from you. Hold on to it, keep it together, and play your game. Andre looking for Will down in the blocks. Miscommunication. Aztecs, another opportunity. Closing in on 11 minutes left. The Aztecs and the Coyotes. The Region 1 Finals. Coyotes looking for their first Region 1 Championship. The winner gets an automatic berth to the national tournament in Danville, Illinois at Danville Area Community College. And that'll be off the foot of Jakob Lloyd. Kicking violation. It'll be the Aztecs balls coming up the court. Cohen J. Gonzalez, the pride of Mesquite. Played for head coach Sean Lynch. Big basketball family. His mom's the head coach of the women's squad. Alexander scoops it underneath. Oldham can't connect. Good post defense by the Coyotes. Fisher. And that's something right there that the Coyotes have just been improving and improving on each game. Really locking down the paint, making sure no one gets the rebound, and stopping the, the point from uh, converting. And they're calling the offensive foul against Andre. And right now, we've seen Marlin pick up a technical. Mm -hmm. Coyotes cannot afford to get another one and see any other starters getting tossed in this one. Absolutely, no. This is the time to keep emotions in check and let Coach advocate for you on the fouls. 22-16. 10-25 left. Good crowd, good energy. We got members of the Chandler Gilbert softball team here today. Down low in the box. Good block. Andre the block, Cohen G knocks it down. Cohen J Gonzalez, red hot out of the gates. He's got 10. And Cohen showing that he is lethal, whether it's on the inside with his speed or on the outside with a shot. Impressive player so far here in this game. Fisher down low and draws the contact against Coda Benson. And Checking you know, back in for this for the Aztecs is Zach Williamson. Andre down low. Misses under further out and said, you know what, I can take a step in and take my sweet spot shot, and he does it. Marlon checking back in. Gonzalez. 
Lock in him inside. Ooh. And a big touch by Wes Bell on the good feed by Cohen J. Gonzalez. Cohen J. doing a little bit of everything. KJ up top. Deion Jenkins. KJ outside. Too strong. Ripped down by Bell. Cohen J. Gonzalez rifling through. Off balance. And Cohen J. will go to the line to shoot a pair. A foul on KJ Dunn. His first. And that's the tricky part with a quick player like Cohen Gonzalez. He's going to go fast. He's going to move. If you're not fast enough for it, you might grab a foul. He's been lightning fast up and down the court. Already with 10 points. That Connects good. on the first. Marlon, Will Coates, Jakob Lloyd checking in. Dayon, Andre, Justin Fisher checking out. 25, 24, Aztecs. And Gonzalez connects on both. Off to a fast start right here in his backyard. High school ball over at Mesquite High. KJ almost had it taken away. Coates highly defended. Marlin picked up by Zach Williamson. Jakob. Guarded by Bell. Jakob strong. Off the mark. Loose ball. And in favor of the Aztecs off KJ Dunn. And you see the Aztecs changing up their defensive style just a little bit. In the first few minutes of this game, they're playing further back, giving distance, trying to make sure they don't penetrate inside. And now they're bringing the game to them, coming a little bit further out, trying to make those steals. And we appreciate you sticking with us right here on the Channel Gilbert Sports Network. We apologize about the technical difficulties. We are locked and loaded back in. Aztecs leading the Region 1 Finals over Chandler Gilbert, 26-24. And up and in, Jalen Alexander. He's got four points, and it's a four-point Aztecs lead. They've gone on a nice run to go on top. And the Aztecs have seemed to find a little bit of a hole down low that they can make those lobs to their big man. Kyle's going to need to work to lock that up. McCain puts it on the deck, can't connect off the glass. Williamson swings it over to Coda Benson. Benson maneuvering his way. Williamson going strong. Fires it up. And good work by Coda Benson and Zach Williamson on the fast break on the left side. And Justin Fisher and Andre Harris about to check back in. Zach Williamson at the line, 51%. Grew up in Anchorage, Alaska, went to South Anchorage High School. And you can see both teams doing a tremendous job subbing in their players, keeping the energy. They realize this is a long, hard-paced game, and they need to keep their players fresh so they can continue to compete. Aztecs up five. Williamson. And the Aztecs doing a great job at the line. They've hit on seven of eight from the free throw line. They're up by six. Chandler Gilbert in need of a basket in a big way. And Cohen Jay coming off the screen will pick it up. And that's what Marlon Landingham does, such a good offensive player. He can stroke it from the outside, and he's got that quick first step. And Gonzalez picks it up off the reach-in. And I appreciate the refs calling this game from early on, making it clear, you know, we're not going to have any any high-energy fights, nothing like that. We're going to keep it clean and play basketball. Fisher up top, guarded by Coda Benson. Dumps it down. Andre in traffic. There we floater, go. And Andre gets it to fall. He's got 10. Coyotes pull within four. 30 to 26. Five minutes left in this first half. Swung outside. Coda Benson. Alexander down low. Alexander going in strong against Jakob. Jakob, good defense. Jakob there again. Good hands. Back up and in. West Bell. A third opportunity, and the Aztecs capitalize. They're up by six. Justin Fisher. Working that right side. Justin 
Denied underneath. Yaka picks it back up. Marlon long range. Marlon too strong. Andre underneath. Marlon puts it on the deck. Athletic move, and they call Marlon for the offensive foul. And Marlon laughs it off, and that's a good thing to do. 32-26. Lockie McCain checking back in. Lockie so far has not punched his ticket in the scoring column. And we saw early in the game from the refs, they're calling those charges. So got to be careful on the other end of the court. They're going to call it likewise. Bad pass from Jalen Alexander in the corner to Zach Williamson. And we get a timeout on the floor. And the Aztecs, they were down at one point, 22 to 14. They found their offense, and Cohen J. Gonzalez, the pride of Mesquite High, leading the way. He's got 12 first half points. And Joe, we talked about early on in this game, the pace, the explosive pace that the Aztecs can take where they can come zooming out of the gates and get ahead of you. Kyle's need to get back on defense, not try to play too high up, lock down the perimeter, and most importantly, big guys, stay back, block off that opportunity for the big men to drive in and get the open lane. And once again, a critical moment in the first half was the technical on Marlon Landingham. Cohen J knocked down two free throws plus the possession that they capitalized on and a four point swing. And once again, we, we talked about this Coyotes team, how good they are, but sometimes they're their own worst enemies by letting their emotions get the best of them. And they've got to be able to control those throughout this contest. Yep, these are young guys, high intensity, high energy, and you got to appreciate Coach Chilsby pulling Marlon back, having him sit down, cool down, and then letting him back in. Andre underneath. A battle of the bigs. Williamson pulls it down. Swung out to Coda Benson. West Bell down in the box, wanting the ball. Going strong underneath. And going the other way, losing the handle. Dylan Baker. Thirty-two twenty-six. Under four minutes left. Lockie McCain swings it out. Andre, top of the key. Andre, little floater, and it drops. Andre, he's got 12 points. And I love how locked into the game Andre Harris is. He's keeping it cool, keeping it calm, taking his time, and putting the shots up that he knows he can take and make. Dylan Baker, long range. Won't go. Pulled down by Will Coates. Coates swings it out to Justin Fisher. Justin. Up the floor. Zach Williamson on Fisher. Now Andre working his way down. Andre, another floater, and it drops. Andre racking it up. He's got 14 first half points. And that's the ball movement and the, and the monster that Andre is that all these teams fear. When we talk to these coaches, they say, we've got to lock down Andre Harris. Oldham on the other end, misses underneath. Andre doing it all, providing that good post defense. Picks himself up off the court. Lockie works his way. Now it's Justin with Coda Benson on the defensive assignment. Andre, top of the key, works his way to the right side. Jakob will let it fly. Jakob, short, pulled down by Williamson. Coda Benson, left side, swung out, dumped down Oldham. Good hands. Good hands by Andre. Slaps it away. Fisher will coach. Oh, and Coates my. throws it down like a champ. And we're not in at 32. What a play by Will Coates and Justin Fisher. The little lob and the slam dunk. Will Coates high and hard. And the Coyotes have stormed back to tie this one at 32. And it started on the defensive end with Andre. The great hands down in the post, denying Gabe Oldham. Mm -hmm. And that's some plays, you know, we've seen these type of plays from Justin Fisher at, against Scottsdale. That end of game, hammer home, and Will Coates. Just these two players so good at reading the court, having that chemistry, and knowing how to play off each other. Andre, 14 points. 
Great on the defensive end, Justin Fisher. And in talking to Coach Steve Silsby, he feels, as of now, Justin Fisher, his basketball future is still up in the air. There are college coaches inquiring about Justin. And Coach Silsby feels that whoever gets Justin, they've got themselves a steal of a player. Academically, great. 3.6 GPA. He's learned how to play point guard. He'll give you everything underneath the glass. He's putting up 10, 5, and 3. He puts the fear in opposing defenses, shooting 46% from the floor. The defensive player of the year of the conference and runs the point very poised at all times. And you know what, Joe? In football, you got a quarterback who you want to be concise, calm, lead the team. That's Justin Fisher for this basketball team. Andre and Jalen Alexander. Getting after it down in the box. Possession arrow. It's all Aztecs. But once again, Andre Harris, he's got his footprint all over this one. And you know what, Joe? I love to see the smiles on these boys' faces. When you know they're having fun, when they're keeping their energy calm, and just kind of shrugging off the things and the mistakes, that's when you know they're playing good ball. Fisher and Alexander stepped on the baseline. Possession for the Coyotes. Now a chance to regain the lead. Good crowd on hand. Got members of the softball and baseball teams and the soccer and volleyball teams here this evening supporting their fellow athletic mates on the campus of Chandler Gilbert. Located off the 202 Cooper Road and Pecos Road as well. The County Center, multi-million dollar facility. One of the best in Arizona. Justin down the lane, Justin wow. gliding and draws the blocking foul. And Justin is just that guy. He's got that power and that energy. When you think he's coming, you know, you're gonna get that block, he just powers through, jumps in through the air, and, and his hang time, we've talked about it, Joe. He's got great hang time, great athleticism, um, just a powerhouse. Wes Bell about to check back in, and Bell has had a good, strong first half. Six points, been a good rim defender. Bell putting him 8-5 and one, 65% field goal percentage. Now Justin at the line, 78% free throw shooter. This is on the first. Coyotes now with only their third free throw in this first half. A well played game, not a lot of fouls, just up and down play, good hard physical play, great athleticism on both sides. The pride of Hamilton High. Sinks the second. He's got four points. Coyotes back up one. West Bell. Dumped down. Alexander. And the foul call on Andre. Andre reaching in. That's his second. KJ Dunn about to check back in. And Andre knew it as soon as he went in. He saw the contact. He felt it go through. And the foul was called. You gotta love Andre's aggressiveness in this one. He's done a little bit of everything, but along the way, can't pick up those ticky-tack reach-ins. Mm -hmm. Alexander starting to fill the box score. He's got five. KJ checking in. Andre getting a breather. Knotted at 33. Region one finals, number one, Chandler Gilbert, number two, Pima. And is this not the game that we've promised that we've been talking about where it's gonna be head-to-head, -head, tied up with a minute left in the first half? Will Coates, the pride of Texas, skying for the rebound. 20 on the shot clock. Jakob picked up by Bell. Swung over. Justin lets it fly from three and connects. Justin Fisher, his second three. Coyotes up three. Fifty seconds left in the half. Coda Benson. Picked up by Lockie. Good defense by Justin. Swung out. That's going to be a, a backcourt violation against the Aztecs. And that Coyotes defense standing loud and proud in the later half here of the first half. And they've done a good job coming off that timeout, realizing we got to get back. We got to play solid defense, lock down the perimeter. And they've done a tremendous job since that timeout. 
15 on the shot clock for the Coyotes. Justin going strong. Wow. Justin couldn't connect underneath. Now it's the Aztecs will play for the final shot. Coach Brian Peabody calling for the offensive play. He'll work his way to the bottom of your screen. 12 on the shot clock. Benson going through. West Bell, good defense by the Coyotes. Down in the box, West Bell. And Bell, soft touch. And that's going to do it. As Justin with the heave at the half falls short. And at the half, the Coyotes with a one point lead, and they started fast. Matt with a 22 to 14 lead. Then it was the Aztecs going on a run to take the lead, all behind the aggressive play of Cohen J. Gonzalez. And then it was the Coyotes on the latter half to regain the lead. And we saw that at the leader. And the facilitator for the Coyotes was Andre Harris. 14 first half points, great defensively. He was everywhere. Yeah, and look, I mean, their biggest weapon so far for the Aztecs has been their great speed. And if they can get into their big man's hands on the run with just a couple of Coyote defenders, they're guaranteed a basket. But Coyotes doing a great job reading that, playing strong defense. And look, Aztecs, they've got a great pass, a great flow to their game if they can make the plays and make the quick passes like they do so well. So continue doing what you're doing. Lock down all those great things that you've been doing all season and lock it in. And when we talked about the Coyotes, two regular season victories over Pima, they held Pima to 70 points in those games and only six and a half assists. So right now they've, they've kept them well under their mark of 104 points and Steve Silsby, of course, he's got some concerns. He's talking to his assistant coaches right to our right, but he's got the lead, and that puts a smile on his face and the fan base here at Chandler Gilbert. Right now, the D1 region playoffs also start tonight. Number one, Eastern Arizona. The regular season champs overall in the conference will host number four, Yavapai, and number two, Coaches will take on Number three, Arizona Western. We'll take a short time out right here from Chandler Gilbert. It's the Region 1 Finals between number two, Pima, and number one, Chandler Gilbert. More to come from the Coyote Center. And we welcome you back to the Coyote Center. The Coyotes with a one point lead behind Andre Harris's 14 first half points, leading 36 35. We are joined by Fletcher Brown, Channel Gilbert women's basketball team, and, and Fletch. High up and down pace in that first half. Coyotes jumped out to a 22 14 lead. Aztecs went back on top. Then the Coyotes with a late surge. What'd you see? Well, I was really glad to see. Silsby's team jump out to an early lead, but you had to expect that Pima was going to come back strong. I mean, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't be in the position they're in if they didn't have fight and, and grit in them. Um, I hate to say it, technical foul kind of swayed the momentum a little bit, which is a bummer. Um, but I think over the course of the game, if the Coyotes can keep this pace and keep the tempo of the game where it's at, only allowing 36 points at the half, uh, then they then they can finish strong. West Ball with eight points. And what do you see from Cohen J. Gonzalez, the young man who played his high school ball at Mesquite? Of course, big basketball family. His mom is Candace Gonzalez, the head coach of the women's team. 
once again that that squad made another deep run in the 4A playoffs losing to South Point Catholic good first half for him 12 points moving up and down and Fletch what did you see from Gonzalez well I saw him hit a, at least one three uh, to my memory uh, pretty deep you know quick trigger he hit the one shot the fadeaway and one from behind the backboard I thought I don't know if that's a shot that he practiced or if it's just a little playoff magic but super impressed with him uh, especially because of his his size you know I don't I hate to point out the obvious, but he's not the biggest guy out there. But he's got a lot of heart. Uh, he's definitely been a big part of, of this team's success this year. And uh, if they can find him in transition, if the Coyotes can find him in transition, that's certainly going to help a lot because you don't want to let a guy like that who's already confident, who already operates with a little bit of irrational confidence, you don't, you don't want to give a guy like that uh, any more you know, fuel to the fire. And Andre Harris, the... Region one division two player of the year. He's been everywhere 14 first half points been so good down in the blocks Your thoughts on what you've seen from Andre Andre has been keeping him in the game I mean, he's, he's had a couple big rebounds defensively in traffic I think if Andre can hit a 15 footer or, or hit an 18 foot jump shot early in the second half That's gonna that's gonna bait the defense out a step or two and then he can con continue to drive Everything that he scored to my memory has been you know, right off, right on the block or at the charge circle. So if he can hit that 18 footer and, and pull the defense out just one or two steps, that's really going to open things up for not only his scoring, uh, but it's going to allow a guy like Will Coates or a guy like Lockie to get an open look if the defense collapses in. Fletch, and we, we touched on it, and I've talked to Coach Steve Silsby about this. I think from top to bottom when the Coyotes are healthy, they've got their full roster, I believe they are the best team in this conference. That being said, I also think at times they're their own worst enemy by imploding with the emotional baggage that they sometimes bring to the court by letting one play define the moment and let that get the best of them. If you're Coach Silsby in that half, in that locker room, what are you trying to do to make sure that these guys stay on point, stay on focus with so much at stake, a trip and a first ever Region 1 championship on the line and a berth to the national tournament? That's that's a really tough question. If, if I knew the answer to that, you know, our team might be in the, in the championship game. But if I was in the locker room right now, I would tell the guys for these next 20 minutes, we just got to stay stay in the moment and we got to stay together. If we get up, we can't get too high. If we get down, we can't get too low. We just got to stay even killed for the next 20 minutes. Uh, and when the game is over, when we're in the when we're in the winner's circle, then we can let our emotions out and celebrate. But for, for these next 20 minutes, we got to stay in the moment and we got to do it all together collectively. Fletch for your team. Another great year, making the postseason for the second year in a row. You lost to top seed Mesa. No shame in that. That Mesa team led by head coach Corey Stevenson. They've got a shot in the national tournament to do some big things. But your thoughts on the growth of this team, and, and it says a lot for you and assistant coach Leon Sutton and this program going in the right direction to make the postseason for two years in a row. I'm super proud of, of the players on our team, and I'm, I'm super proud of the, the growth that our program has made since I took over three years ago. Uh, I owe a lot of that to, to Russ and, and even Coach Silsby for being mentors and for being super supportive. Uh, we're happy with this season. We, we probably could have won two or three more that we let slip away, but uh, we're happy, but we're not satisfied. We understand making the playoffs two years in a row hasn't been done here in, in quite some time, and uh, we have a really good core of the group coming back for next season. Uh, we've signed five or six players that I'm really excited about who are who are winners, who are tough, uh, who understand what it takes to, to win at, at a high level, at least in the high school ranks. So I'm super optimistic about next season, and uh, I know if we continue trending in the right direction that, you know, we – we're right on the cusp of having a, a season like Coach Silsby's team and, and uh, going all the way. So I'm, I'm excited already about next year. Yeah. No, they've been a fun team to watch across the board. And and really, what's kind of the, what would you say your strengths, your weaknesses, but looking forward, what, what are you most excited about? I'm most excited about moving on our, our sophomore class. Uh, Steph, Megan, and Aisha, they, they wrapped up their, their junior college careers, and they're all uh, – got a lot of interest from four-year schools and then as we look forward to next season uh, Sherelle Yazzie and, and Maya Way some of the players that really had strong freshman years getting their film out getting them some publicity and exposure to the next level uh, because that's really my my mission that's what motivates me as the head coach here 
I understand what the JUCO life is all about. I, I played it for two years before playing at the four-year level. Uh, Coach Leon, our, our lead assistant, he played junior college before playing at the next level. So, you know, that's that's really our goal for all of our players is to move them on to, to bigger and better things. So excited about the future and, um, you know, they're going to come in with the right attitude every day. And, and as long as their effort is in the right place and they take care of business in the classroom, then the sky's the limit for them. So I'm excited to see what uh, what transpires. So right. Fletch, we are closing in We're about five minutes away from the second half. What do you see happening in the second half? And what do the Coyotes have to do uh, in, in securing this one to punch their ticket? And this, this might sound a little bit odd because it's largely out of their control, but if they can stretch the floor, if they can hit two or three threes in the first, you know, first six, seven minutes of this game, uh, that's really going to open things up for them. You know, Coach Peabody and, and the Aztecs, they, they use two timeouts um, in, the, in the first half, which everybody's, everybody's a great armchair coach at halftime, so I'm not going to comment on his decision making, but you know, that might come back to bite them, but if the Coyotes can stretch the floor, if Fish can, can hit one or two more threes, if Marlin can come off the bench and stretch the floor, then uh, the entire Aztec defense is going to get in scramble mode a little bit, and, and that'll open things up. And I've got to ask from both of you, from your perspective, I've seen a little bit of a switch on defense from both teams. Early on, Aztecs playing a little bit more reserved, playing back, not wanting to give them the inside lane. Now, them switching it up, coming a little bit further out to the court, guarding them a little more heavily, and Coyotes doing the kind of a similar thing. What have you seen? What do you think is going to be most successful for them in locking down the, in each, each other? The battle, the battle in the paint is what it's going to come down to. Uh, you know, one of my favorite coaches, Pat Riley, he always says, no rebound, no ring. So the battle <laughs> in the paint is, is going to be what it boils down to tonight. I bet you the team that has the most rebounds at the end of the game is, is probably going to be the team that wins. There you go. An exciting first half. And now Fletcher Brown breaking it down at the halftime. Fletch, always good to see you, my friend. Appreciate it. Likewise, guys. Fletcher Brown, the women's coach of Chandler Gilbert. His team coming off a successful second year of making the postseason. Looking to build on that. We're going to take a short time out. Both teams are back on the floor. We are three and change from starting the second frame. Keep it locked and loaded right here on the Chandler Gilbert Sports Network. Closing in on the second half between the top seed Chandler Huber basketball team and number two Pima. The winner automatic berth to the national tournament. In Danville Illinois at Danville Area Community College as we reflect on the first half Andre Harris 14 points Jakob Lloyd with five Justin Fisher with seven Marlon Landingham with six 
on the other side. Cohen J. Gonzalez. What a strong first half, 12 points. West Ball with eight. And for all the West Ball fans out there, apologize. Young man having a great first half. Gonna get it right for the second half, we promise you. As we kind of peruse the stats of Pima. Dylan Baker with four points. Gabe Oldham kept in check, and Oldham such a force, a 66% field goal percentage has been kept in check, only two points. So now the Aztecs back on the floor. Baker, Jalen Alexander, Gabe Oldham, Coda Benson. And back on the floor for the Coyotes, Will Coates, Lockie McCain, Justin Fisher, Andre Harris, as well as Jakob Lloyd. 20 minutes could decide the fate of one team punching its ticket to the national tournament, and the other will be at the mercy of the selection committee. 36-35, second half underway. Andre, Jakob Lloyd swings it over to Will Coates, guarded by Dylan Baker. Andre down in the blocks, Jalen Alexander. Andre, strong, good defense by Jalen. Andre swings it out. Jakob puts it on the deck. Jakob back to Andre. Jakob to Andre. Andre physical underneath and a strong second half beginning for Andre. Baker stripped. Justin Fisher the other way. Justin inside. Jakob off the great feed from Will Coates and Jakob. And four quick points for the Coyotes, 40 to 35. And the Coyotes exploding out of the gates, putting their big boy pants on and taking a five point second half lead. And what a great succession of, of plays right there. Obviously we saw that, right? That quick dish to their big man to try and get the lane. Great defense hustling back. Got to be careful on those. They'll try to run that all night long if they can single out one guy in the big paint and drop it down there. On the other end though, the Aztecs realizing Andre Harris is a threat, got to lock him down. If they're going to use that down low perimeter, they got to put a, a Jakob Lloyd down there, split the defense, pass back and forth, and find the opening. And talk about utilizing the shot clock right down to the final seconds. It was Jakob to Will Coates, Coates back to Jakob, and Jakob underneath, strong and physical. And that is the nature of Jakob Lloyd, who was so good in the loss against Eastern Arizona just played like a man child. You name it in that game, the Coyotes were without Andre Harris and Jakob. 20 plus points, double rebounds, was everywhere. Knocked down threes and showing he's got the ability to play at the next level. And whoever gets him is going to get a hardworking player who always straps it on on game day. 19 minutes and change. Coyotes racing back to the floor. A little pep in the step. Increasing their lead to five points. Off the inbounds, it's Oldham. Cohen J. Gonzalez, that great first half, 12 points. Knocked down two threes and lets it fly. Off the front of the iron, Jakob yet again. Rips it like a champ. And the Coyotes will slow the pace. And they have no problem doing that. Last thing they want to do is get into a track meet with this Aztecs team. Andre loses the handle. Jalen Alexander, good defense. And you, can, and you can see the Aztecs from that halftime. They've talked about it. Guard Andre. Put your hands in there. Make sure he doesn't get a pass down low. Hold him up top. Cohen J lets it fly. That's off the mark. Andre with the rip. And right now, Andre is punching his ticket to a D1 scholarship somewhere. He is bringing the hard hat effort. He's down in the blocks against Alexander. And that is knocked away. Coyotes will have 14 on the shot clock. Steve Silsby drawing up the play from the sidelines. Justin Fisher on the inbounds. Coyotes had some struggles against Scottsdale. They've been clean in that category and Lockie long from three. Oldham with the rip. 
Coda Benson racing up that left side. Benson swings it over. Gonzalez catch and shoot. That's strong. McCain with the rebound. And Aztecs taking a slightly different approach here in the first few minutes of the second half. Trying to find Colin J. Gonzalez. Let him take a few threes. Get his shot on. Try to put some points on the board. Right now, Dylan Baker silent in this second half. Andre deep in the post. Lockie catch and shoot. Off the mark. Tracked down by Jakob. Coates over to Fisher. Benson. And we got a foul down low. Oldham, physicality against Andre. And that's his second. Checking in, West Ball, who was so good in the first half with eight first half points. Andre down low, gets it to Justin. Justin driving strong and blocked by Alexander. Jalen Alexander, motor running. Swung in the corner, Baker lets it fly. Baker off the mark. Justin in traffic, pulls it down. Justin back the other way. 40 to 35. 17 minutes left in this decisive second half between these two region one powerhouses. Jakob down low, little floater. Will Coates can't get it to go. Benson among the trees, pulls it down. Benson. Swings it back out to Dylan Baker. 18 on the shot clock. Underneath, Cohen Jay. Benson up top, his first shot. And that's a winner. Coda Benson. First shot of the second half. He's got five points. Cowdy's lead is two. Cohen Jay Gonzalez. All over Lockie McCain. Will Coates, Coates pulling up. Will off the mark, falls his shot. Little floater won't go. Tracked down by Justin. Justin will take his time. In and out, pulled down by West Ball. Some saw looks from the cows, just couldn't land. Ball up top, Benson being tracked down. Benson. Alexander underneath, loses the handle. Cohen J gets it back. Little elbow won't go. Lockie rips it. Both teams battling back and forth to try and get that outside game going, get a few more shots on the board, take some threes, and really warm up that shot. And Steve Silsby calls a full timeout. So the Coyotes built a five-point lead. The Aztecs responded getting three, and now it's a two-point game. So Steve Silsby calling a full timeout, probably to get his offense going, and his defense has done a really nice job here in the second half, allowing only three points. And right now, if you're the Coyotes, the Aztecs putting up 104 points, and in the two victories, regular season against the Aztecs, the Coyotes held the Aztecs to 70 points, and they're roughly in that Semi, semi range right now. And Joe, when you're a team that scores that many points, that's an achievement, being able to lock them down. That shows the strength of the Coyotes defense. And we were talking on the break, you know what? Coyotes forced the Aztecs to take those outside shots. And I, I like what they're doing. I like that the Aztecs are trying to take those shots and it proves the Coyotes have done a good job locking them out from the inside. 40 to 38, 15, 44. Andre Harris, strong first half, picking up in the second half. He's got 16. Jakob Lloyd's been a force, seven points as well. Both providing the physicality. As Fletcher Brown talked about it, he'd love to see the Coyotes be able to stretch the floor, knock down a couple threes, which would open up the post just a little bit more. And you have, we've seen this tonight, where they've had a few moments where they had an open look from the outside, and rather pump faked and drove it inside. We'd like to see it switch up a little bit. Marlon Lanningham back in the game. Marlon, an offensive force. KJ Dunn also in. They dump it down to KJ. Alexander down. KJ loses his footing. Coda Benson racing up the floor. Benson swings it outside. Dylan Baker off the mark. 
KJ Town with the big block. Gonzalez swings it. Ball puts it on the deck. And the Aztecs. And a call, a foul call on number 10. So there's a timeout on the floor of the counties discussing right now with referee Michael Ojeda. And it's all about keeping emotions in check. And we're getting an update on the scores table from what just transpired, but needs to say a timeout on the floor. 15, 14 left. All right, and after kind of checking in with the, uh, the official scorebook, it looks like there was no foul on the play. He called a timeout on the way down, and they counted him as having possession of the ball, and so they'll go to timeout. So both sides talking some things over. The Aztecs, eight and three away from their arena. The Coyotes, so good on home court. Being tested, the winner gets the automatic berth to the Division II playoffs at Danville Area Community College in Danville, Illinois, beginning March 18th. And for the other side, who walks away disappointed, the selection show is on Tuesday. Cohen Jay. Aztecs, five on the shot clock. Benson, Benson, off balance. Travel. And they call a travel on Coda Benson. Good defense by the Coyotes as Zach Williamson checks back in. And that's just the tough part for some of these smaller guards against the Coyotes. They're long, they're lanky. You've got to really put on the speed and get around them. And he just didn't have enough, he didn't have enough steps in the tank to get him there. Under 15 minutes left, Marlon. Good pump fake. And Marlon buries the jumper from he the outside. Marlon, he's got seven. Ooh. And Marlon thought he had the clean block. And that is Marlon's third, 42-38. And right now, Andre Harris trying to keep Marlon in check. Cohen Jay, his first points of the second half. And Marlon will really have to be careful now with four fouls on the board on, the, on, on, on his book. He's been a pivotal player. When he's in the game, he's put up some great points, brought great energy. He needs to continue to do so. Play it safe on defense, lock it down, but don't get into foul trouble. Gonzalez now at 14. A two-point, Coyotes lead, 42-40. Heavyweights going at it here at the Coyote Center. Coyotes, Marlin from long range, off the mark. Alexander pulls it down. Alexander, middle of the floor. Swings it out, West ball. Cohen J. Gonzalez, guarded by Lanningham. Driving. And drawing the contact, once again, Wes Ball, who's provided some tough physical minutes. And what a great set of passes that led to that score. Great unselfish ball from the Aztecs. One look, two look, three looks, and he drive to the lane, get the foul, take it to the board. Ball a 68% free throw shooter, a freshman, 6'8", long, lanky, physical. He's got a good stroke as well. He's got nine points. From Marana, Arizona, went to Marana High School. Hits one of two. 42-41. Coyotes in a little bit of a scoring drought in the last couple minutes. Good defense being played on both sides. No easy ones have been allowed. KJ down in the box. KJ. Won't go. Alexander, another rip. Cohen J. Gonzalez swings it. 
Morrison. Make that Williamson. Alexander. High off the glass, pulled down by Justin Fisher. Justin loses the handle. Good steal by Williamson. Now it's Alexander the other way. And we're gonna call a blocking foul. On KJ Dunn, and the fans wanted to travel. And this is a moment where the Coyotes really need to keep their emotions in check. They can't let this moment in the game define what happens the rest of the game. Jakob Lloyd and Lockie McCain about to check back in. Looks like that was a call on Andre Harris. As he caught him with the body and the Euro step. Alexander now with six points. Andre with three fouls. We're tied at 42. Oldham about to check back in. That's in and out. Big rebound by Dylan Baker. Shot from the outside, won't go. Lockie pulls it in. Coda Benson with a good look from the outside. Marlin. Marlin thought about it for a split second. Plenty on the shot clock. 17. KJ rips it over. Marlin, high screen. Marlin through traffic and Marlick just gliding his way and will <laughs> go to the line. And that's the great thing about Marlin. You know, if he doesn't see the shot, he doesn't see the opportunity, he can't get that three off, he's gonna drive and he's gonna make it work one way or another. He's great at drawing that contact, making you think he's going one way and getting you to jump right into him. Marlin with the gold shoes. Now, Coach Steve Silsby is hoping he's golden from the line. And misses on the first. And we've seen this in a few games where Marlin in these crucial moments where it's tight, struggling at the free throw line. Saw that in Eastern Arizona. Had a chance to ice it in regulation and miss both free throws and then in overtime, same situation. 42 all. This one turning into a second half defensive slugfest. 43-42 and the Coyotes, that's the kind of game they want to play. Andre checking back in as well as Justin Fisher. Williamson that left side. Oldham. Looking for Cohen J. Cohen J lets it fly. Gonzalez off the mark. Will Coates tracks it down. Good hustle by the Coyotes. Marlin on the other end. And you can tell the Aztecs really rely on their speed and their energy. Oh, wow. Marlin, Marlin. with the left hand. Lanningham. The finesse and flair as he drives the hoop. Puts it right over the top. He's got 10 points. Three point Coyotes lead. Cohen Jay. And the Williamson. Aztec, and the Aztecs, you can see, going back and relying heavily on that quick ball movement, which gets him the bucket from Cohen J. Gonzalez off the corner. Really relying on moving the ball. And you'll see on the Aztecs, there's rarely someone standing still. He's got 16. The lead back to one for the Coyotes. Jakob swings it over to McCain. Jakob down the box, picked up by Oldham. Swung over, KJ, elbow, too strong. Over the top, Andre, Justin Fisher checking in. McCain, KJ checking out. Dylan Baker checking back in. Jalen Alexander also checking in. Coates, Jakob Lloyd, Marlon, Fisher, Andre on the floor. Baker, Benson, Alexander, Gonzalez, Oldham on the floor for the Aztecs. Inside pass. And Justin Fisher will walk that one off. He saw he got the contact, a little grab on the arm. Keeping his composure, staying calm. Alexander will go to the line. 65% free throw shooter. 
Knocks it down. He's got seven points. We're knotted at 45. Alexander, pure from the line. And that's been a tough aspect of this game so far. I mean, right when the Coyotes get a little bit of a lead, foul call, head to the line, they kind of tie the score right back up. And the Coyotes don't want to get into foul trouble in the second half. Yaka puts it on the deck. And Yaka stepped out on the baseline. And they call the foul on Yaka. On the push off against Cohen J. So right now, both teams really just grinding to get a basket. Cohen J. Strong move. And that will be Andre's third foul here in the game. Cohen J back to the line. Now with 17 on the night. Aztecs back up two. Under 11 minutes left. And you can hear Coach Silsby from the sideline yelling to his boys, stay in the game, stay in this moment. Don't let these fouls define the pace that you play. 48-45. On the line, a ticket to the national tournament. Automatic berth. Andre underneath, battling against Alexander. Andre strong. Follows his shot. And they call the offensive against Andre. Looks like a jump ball call on the play. So no foul on Andre, jump ball situation. Alexander swings it over to Cohen J. Good hands. Look for that pick and roll. This time it's Oldham. And Oldham up top. And the big fellow showing his range. Aztecs up five. And that Aztecs bench. Storm in the court with a purpose. And now it's the Coyotes that have to recollect themselves. They jumped out to a five point second half lead and they've been stifled here in the last six minutes scoring only five points and the Aztecs methodically getting to the line and creating good shots. And then Oldham with that 66% field goal percentage Leads the conference, one of the best in the nation. Needs to say, knocks it down from the free throw line. And on the scoreboard, this game really has been just as tight neck and neck as our Scottsdale playoff game from a few days ago. But I will tell you the difference is Scottsdale playing a lot more aggressive, playing a lot more in your face. Not that either of these teams are not playing aggressive or hard, but a different style of basketball for sure. Both teams playing with skill, finesse, IQ. And it's really a battle of these two top teams with a high level IQ of the game and knowledge of how to play. And we talked about rebounding, how it would play so paramount in this one. And Coyotes with 43 rebounds per game, ranked 15th. And on the other side, for the Aztecs, 48, third in the nation. So crashing the glass, playing tight defense, it's really going to be decisive in this final 10 minutes and 14 seconds. Justin Fisher off the timeout for the Coyotes. Will Coates, only two baskets. Andre just misses, but will shoot a pair. Jalen Alexander picks it up. Andre playing so hard in this one, he's given the team everything and then some. Andre at the line, 71% free throw shooter. Smooth on the first. Anyone's ball game here. And Andre has a tough role to play in this game. He knows the target's on his back. He knows he's the guy that everyone's 
looking for to, de to guard it up and make sure he can't get a point off. Andre misses on the second. Coyotes looking for their first Region 1 championship. Aztecs looking for their first Region 1 title since 2019. They won the reach. Great hands. Justin Fisher. Justin tries to throw it down, and the foul on Dylan Baker. The strong, aggressive move by Justin, being helped up by Jakob and Marlon. And Coach Silsby looking at the ref, saying that should be intentional. That should be intentional. It was clear he was going for the dunk. He went underneath him, got the snag. He's looking for, he's, he's advocating for his player right here, right now. Justin will go to the line. About to check in for the Aztecs, Zach Williamson, as well as West Ball. Justin, one of two from the line tonight. Seven points in the contest. And that one is strong. And right now, free throw shooting huge in this one. Aztecs have brought their fan base from the Pima area. Chandler Gilbert, of course, right here in their backyard. Fan base out in force. And Justin misses both, rebounded by Andre. Andre asking for the ball immediately. And a foul on West Ball. And right now, Andre Harris is playing like a man possessed, mm -hmm. doing everything possible to lead his team. Wants the ball, playing both sides of the court, relentless effort. Great read by Justin on the dish out to Jakob off the inbounds. And you can tell from last, last game with Scottsdale, they've practiced those inbound plays. They had a little struggle there in the Scottsdale game, holding it down, getting it in. And Justin Fisher will find the lane, go fast, and take it right to the hoop. Justin, dynamic, it's a two-point game. Cohen Jay swings it over to Oldham. Dylan Baker, Fisher in his back pocket. Jakob off the screen. Baker loses the handle. Great defense by Jakob. Justin the other way. Justin, and how about that? Justin Fisher, acrobatic. We're not at 50. What a great move. The composure staying in the game. A little Euro step and then the roll off the left hand. Checking back in, Jalen Alexander. Coda Benson checking in. Zach Williamson checking out. Jalen Alexander checking in. We just heard it from the Aztecs sideline. You could hear it said, Jalen, you're going in. You got three fouls. Play smart. And, and no question, foul trouble on both sides will be paramount. Andre with three. Alexander with three. Dylan Baker swings it over to West Ball. Cohen Jay. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Cohen Jay puts it on the deck. Swings it out. West Ball dumps it down the blocks. Great Andre hands. takes it away. Andre Harris living large in the land of Teal. Justin Fisher swings it out. Jakob Marlin back to Justin down low. And Justin will pull it out. A great use of the shot clock by the Coyotes. Marlin driving. Won't connect off the glass. Alexander. Aztecs wanted the foul on Jakob, Coda Benson. And ball on the alley, Anu. And that's that fast-paced ball movement from the Aztecs that gets them the points, puts the Coyotes in tricky trouble. 52-50, Aztecs. Locking McCain, KJ Dunn checking back in. Justin Fisher swings it out to Jakob. Andre from three, Andre. Too strong, and the putback. Put back by Will Coates, the pride of Texas. On the putback, we're not at a 52. And I'll tell you what, that takes tremendous court vision to be able to be in the right spot at the right time to get the putback and get the point for your team. And Will Coates is a master of court vision. Alexander down low, 
Spin move. And gets called for the foul. And that's Alexander's fourth. And the Coyotes have won the energy back. You can hear the crowd. You can see the energy on the faces of the Coyotes. Take that. Continue to play with it. And Let it fuel your game. And you can tell that source of frustration by Dylan Alexander mm -hmm. coming up the court. He's playing with four, and right now you got to figure the Coyotes are going to go right at him. KJ Dunn picked up by Alexander. Justin working off the screen. Justin lets it fly. Won't go. Alexander, another rip. Andre, good battle, but the Aztecs will have it. Oldham checking back in. Alexander checking out. And that's a hard place to be in as a player. One, you know you're going to get subbed out more frequently. And two, your options are limited. you got to play it very safe, and that can be tricky. 52 all. Gonzalez swings it over to West Ball. 15 on the shot clock. Dylan Baker, elbow, won't go. And now the rim starting to tighten up for the Aztecs. We've seen this on both sides in this second half. Points so tough to come by. Both teams really doing a great job defensively. KJ against Oldham. Soft touch, great and it move. goes in. KJ Dunn putting up 10 and 6 field goal percentage. And KJ feeling that one as he's put a few up. They haven't landed, and he's really liking that. He can make that one work. 54%. Oldham underneath. Back door won't go. KJ rips it down. Six minutes left. One versus two. The winner, automatic trip to the national tournament. Justin throws it away. Benson. Benson. And the Aztecs take it with 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Marlon checking in, coach checking out. Fisher, Landingham, McCain, Andre, Dunn on the floor, Chandler Gilbert. And so far this game's been an absolute nail biter. This is the time for both teams if they want to win. They don't want to go to overtime, which I guarantee neither one do, to walk in and start to make the gap between these points. KJ Gonzalez. That Cohen J. Gonzalez, sorry about that, off the mark. Andre dumps it down to KJ. KJ, elbow won't go. Pulled down by West Ball. Gonzalez the other way. Swung over. Benson, 18 on the shot clock. Coyotes up two. Oldham, good defense. Eight on the shot clock. Benson lets it fly from three. And Benson knocks it down. Coda Benson. He's got eight points. Couple threes in this one. The Aztecs back on top. And what a crunch time shot that was to push them above the board to take the lead and push the Coyotes into a timeout. Coda Benson. A 43% three-point shooter, putting him 7-2-3. And, and this is one of those games where it might not fall on a star to make that big shot. It might fall in the hands of a Coda Benson, who's a very good player for the Aztecs. On the other side, for the Coyotes, it could be someone that might have to live in that one moment and have to define the game by rising to that occasion when their number's called. But the Aztecs right to our left. You can feel the energy and effort coming out of that huddle. Once again, foul trouble. Jalen Alexander, he's got four. Andre has three. Alexander back on the floor. So you're thinking, if you're the Coyotes, you go at him immediately and try to get him to foul out. Absolutely. And you know what, Coyotes, if you're in that game, you've ran a great down low game, try to kick you out, get some shots up. And that's the tricky part of the Aztecs. They're fast. They get out there to the perimeter, they put a hand in your face. Jakob up top, shoots it down, Andre. Andre, spin move. Hanging, gliding, and delivering. Andre, coming up big, Coyotes back on top one. Benson being tracked down by Marlon. Alexander, 
Cohen J. Gonzalez. Ball sets the screen. Back over Dylan Baker. Good defense by the Coyotes. Elbow off the mark. Andre pulls it down. Winding down to four minutes left in the Region 1 Finals between number one Chandler Gilbert and number two Pima. Andre down low. Andre. Andre back up and in. Andre cherry picking and the fruit so sweet. 58-55. And credit to Justin Fisher who came up strong, got tried to go for the putback, but recovered it for Andre so he could get the points. Alexander down in the blocks. High off the glass and drops it. Good move by Jalen Alexander. He's got 10 points. 58-57. Andre up top. West ball on him. Back to Justin. 14 on the shot clock. Justin driving. Jakob is there. Jakob. Oh. Jakob. And that's against Jalen Alexander. And Alexander has fouled out of the game. And I'll tell you what, if you're Jalen Alexander, that's a tough spot to be in as a player. There's nothing you want more than to play in these last few crucial moments of what could arguably be one of your end, your end of season game, potentially. And, uh, and that's a tough spot to be in as a player. So respect to him, way to play your heart out and be here. Alexander with some parting words for referee Saeed Alamin on the way out. Needs to say now the Aztecs lose one of their premier post forces as Jakob at the line and Jakob, a smooth operator, cans the first. He's got eight, Coyotes up two. And Jakob making his family proud all over the universe. And I'll tell you, Joe, that's something Jakob every game in these high intensity pressure moments, he's been so great from the free throw line. Jakob, Just going up and putting it in. Good defense on Cohen J. Oldham going strong. Andre with another rip. Double digit rebounds for Andre. Coyotes doing a great job keeping their defense straight up, not drawing the contact. Andre, a double double night. 21 points, double digit rebounds. Justin won't go off the glass, pulled down by West Ball. A three point Coyotes lead. Baker. West Ball shoots it over to Cohen J. Gonzalez. 19 on the shot clock. Baker off the glass. Good move by Dylan Baker. One point game. Two minutes left in this one. The winner punches its ticket to the national tournament in Danville, Illinois. Andre. And they call the offensive against Andre. Andre needs to stay under control mostly in this moment. That's a tough call. That's a hard one to see. That hurts all Coyotes fans across the board. But stay in check, keep it together. And a delay of game will be called on the Aztecs coaching staff as they approach the bench. And right now the Aztecs wanted some clarification with the scores table and how many fouls Andre Harris had. I thought he had three, but instead he only had two. So now he has a third foul. And I and think that early jump ball, everyone thought that was a foul. Just the way it was called, but it actually didn't count. It was no offense foul, no defense foul. 60 to 59, Aztecs. Down one, Baker lets it fly long range. That's off the mark. Loose ball, grabbed by Jakob. And Justin Fisher pulls it down. And Steve Silsby, the master of timeouts, calls one. Buck 34 left. And the Coyotes defensively have done exactly what they've wanted to do. The Aztecs putting up 104 points on the season, leading the nation, leading the nation 
in field goal percentage, 54%. Third in rebounding, first in assists with 23 a game. And the Coyotes closing the lid on the Aztecs. And now the Aztecs without one of their premier forces down low in the blocks. Jalen Alexander has fouled out. Coyotes with possession, one point lead, buck 34 left. Yeah, this is a great spot for the Cows to be in. And you know what, Andre Harris, kudos to Andre. The Aztecs have had really no answers of how to lock down the dominant force that is Andre Harris, player of the year in this division. And, uh, and, and they've just played solid basketball across the board. It's exciting, it's fun. This is where they need to lock in. They need to spread it out. They need to get some points on the board and really put themselves up three, four, five points so we don't get into a tricky spot of last ditch ever shots going in, either putting them into overtime or winning, winning them the game. And the thing about the Aztecs, they're so good from three collectively. They shoot 41%. And right now on the floor, West Ball, Oldham, Cohen J. Gonzalez, Benson, and Dylan Baker. A group, and we saw Benson knock down a couple threes in this one. We know how good Cohen J. Gonzalez is Absolutely. from three. Gonzalez, one of the premier three-point shooters in the conference. And has done the job tonight, shooting 47% from three on the season. Yes, you cannot discount any of these players. They are clutch players. They've been here before, they're experienced. All of them with the steal, and the Aztecs back up one. 61-60. Marlin, pull up, off the mark. Oldham gets it over to Cohen J. And now the Coyotes have got to play some defense. And these are shots that don't need to be forced. 16 on the shot clock. Cohen J working that right side, throws it up, won't go. Benson gets the rebound. Fresh shot clock at 18. Coach Steve Silsby pleading for his team to get a stop. Dylan Baker up top, fade away, won't go. Justin with the rebound. Justin. Ball's on the deck. And it's going the other way off Will Coates. Dylan Baker with the hustle. And now the Coyotes are going to have to foul the Aztecs. And a timeout on the floor. A full timeout on the floor. So. We saw Gabe Oldham with the steal and going the other way. And then on the last possession, the Coyotes with a chance to get into their offense and another bad pass led to a, a scrum on the sidelines and Dylan Baker showing his hustle and patience and leadership for the Aztecs. And now the Aztecs putting the Coyotes in a position where they're gonna have to foul with 28.8 seconds left. And let's take it back to the conversation with Coach Silsby early on. Don't let the pressure get to your head. Stay in the moment, stay composed. There, there's a one point difference here. There's 28 seconds on the clock. Anything could happen. Play your game and put up a good basket. Coyotes won two of three in the regular season from the Aztecs. Winning at home in December, winning at Pima in January, and then losing to the Aztecs at Pima without Justin Fisher and Will Coates. On the floor right now, Jakob Floyd, Justin Fisher, Will Coates, Andre Harris, and Marlon Lanningham. 28.8 seconds left. Coda Benson, Cohen J. Gonzalez, Dylan Baker, West Ball, who's played phenomenal in this contest. He's got 11 points, and Gabe Oldham, his stat line will read the go-ahead basket off the steal. Baker, trapped for a split second. And a call is made. Unsure. And the referees are talking about the clock. 24.8 seconds left. A correction on the clock. 
So now there was no foul on the play, just getting the clock situated. 24.8 seconds left. Benson off the inbounds. Good defense by the Coyotes. They get it to Cohen Jay in the backcourt. The Coyotes have got to foul him, and they do just that. 20.7 seconds left. And the good thing for the Coyotes, they can still tie it with a three if Gonzalez hits two free throws. 61-60 Aztecs. The key points here, stay sharp, get the rebound at all costs, and then get it down the court. Gonzalez, eight for eight from the line tonight. Nails the first. Sixty-two, sixty. Gonzalez nails them both, and the Coyotes are down three with twenty point seven seconds left. And Coach Silsby calls a timeout. And Aztecs Nation, they've made the trek from the Pima area. They are on their feet. The Aztecs, Region One winners in 2017, 2018, and 2019. Haven't won the region since. They made the national tournament all three years, losing in the national finals to Triton in 2018, 89, 85. They were down 22, 14 in this one. Took a lead, the Coyotes regained it at half, 40 to 35. And now late in the frame, they've shown the poise, getting some key stops. And now the Coyotes coming out of this timeout. Need some magic to happen on the end. Yeah, this really comes down to the mindsets of the coaches. These last crucial minutes, what can we cook up, what can we run to get us the points on both ends, or on the, in Aztec's case, lock it down, and then it's the execution of the players. 16.6 seconds left. Steve Silsby counting on a good look. Squad needs a three to tie. Or they can get a quick basket and maybe put the Aztecs back at the line yet again. And for all those watching, if you're not up out of your seats, anticipation, then you're not watching the same game we are. Jakob Lloyd on the deck. Andre. Andre. And Andre works it at the line. And that is a heaven sent foul right there for the Coyotes. With six seconds on the clock, Andre heads the line to hit two. So that sets up the situation. Andre at the line. One of two from the charity strike tonight. Hits the first. And the Coyotes off the inbounds are going to have to foul immediately. 63, 61, Andre trying to pull the Coyotes within one. And it looks like a potential line violation will jump early. Dylan Baker on the jump. So Andre gets another opportunity. Aztec fans rooting against Andre here. Andre can't connect, and the foul goes against Jakob Lloyd. And West Ball will go to the line. And great instincts on Jakob, remembering stop the clock, lock it down, make the foul. Don't waste any time. Marlon Landingham checking back in for his long range ability. West Ball, a 68% free throw shooter. Coach Steve Silsby telling his team to box out. One in one situation. He misses. Rebounded by Dylan Baker.
Baker will go to the line. A big opportunity goes by the wayside for the Coyotes. And it looks like Jakob Lloyd will take a seat with a bit of an injury. We hope that he's okay. Lockie comes in for a potential opportunity to tie him with a three at the buzzer. And Dylan Baker knocks down the first. He's got seven, two of three from the line tonight. This one could ice it. Baker misses. Justin Fisher on his horse at the buzzer, off the mark, and the Aztecs stun the Coyotes. 64, 61, and the Aztecs are the Region 1 champions. And the Coyotes feel the heartbreak and disappointment losing on home court. And the Aztecs right to our left. Celebrating and now both teams will shake hands and a great display of sportsmanship and the Aztecs down the stretch just a little cleaner executed just a little better. Yeah, this is a close game across the board. Our hearts break for the Coyotes as they've put so much energy and effort into the season, played with such tremendous effort. And Pima coming in with what might be an upset. We knew it was gonna be a tough game, a hard fought battle. And Pima with the last few seconds, putting those free throws down and they'll seal the game. So the Coyotes now at the mercy of the selection committee and they'll await their fate on Tuesday. And this has been a tremendous team across season with players who've done great things, have great awards to their name. We hope to see them in nationals. Aztecs celebrating their first Region 1 title since 2019. The team that grinded this one out. Now Russ Luce, the athletic director for Chandler Gilbert, will make the announcement for the Region 1 champions. And that is the Aztecs of Pima Community College. Big celebration. And for Pima, Cohen J. Gonzalez led the team with 20. West Ball so good off the bench with 11 points. And the Region 1 MVP of the tournament goes to Jalen Alexander. And Alexander fouled out of this one. He finished with 10 points and brought a little physicality. And that Aztecs team that puts up 104 points, the average 23 assists, field goal percentage at 53%, all the best in the nation. They're fourth in the nation. And the announcement is made. And once again, rebounding this Aztecs team, ranked third in the nation with 48. And they were tough and they were physical. And their game resonates and the style they play 
They had a 12 game winning streak going on to the regular season finale against Eastern Arizona that was snapped. They picked up with the victory over Glendale and now beating the Coyotes on their home turf and the Coyotes with so much to be proud of. 27 and four coming into this one, 18 and four in league play. Now they have to await the selection committee and those announcements are made on Tuesday. We all feel that Chandler Gilbert has the resume to make it to the postseason, but it all depends, Matt, on how other things shake out, how other conference tournaments shake out as well. Absolutely, we look forward to seeing him in the national tournament. We believe that they deserve a position and a spot there. They play tremendous ball. You know, this was a tough game. They played hard, both teams, and there are moments where, honestly, no one could predict who was gonna come out with the win. And it came down to some great playing, some great efforts, some great plays made by coaches, some great free throw shots, and Pima doing a great job locking out the shots. Andre Harris with 22, Justin Fisher, Marlon with 11 apiece, Jakob Lloyd with nine, Aztecs at center court celebrating, their fans in the rafters celebrating with them. They are the region one champions, and once again, the Coyotes heartbreak in the region one finals. This time, unlike last year, suffering on the road at Scottsdale, this time they suffer right here on home court in front of their, hand, their fan base. For all the good people at Chandler Gilbert, like Russell Luce, the AD that allows us to produce the live streams. Paulo Hutchison coming in and providing all his great work. For Matt McCurdy, I'm Joe Paquino. Once again, the Coyotes fall short in the Region 1 Finals against the Aztecs. The Aztecs, the Region 1 champions, coming on the road and winning at Chandler Gilbert, 64 to 61. Have a good night.